Welcome everyone to the Abidor Good Friday meditation. Isaiah 53 verses 1 to 5. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Let us pray. Lord, you picked up the weight of your cross, the weight of your sins. We are your burden, an overwhelming burden, but that burden is sweet to you because of the love you also bear to us, an overwhelming love. Your love has no limits. Your love has no limits. Please sing with me the Teze chant, O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, you answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that scripture might be fulfilled that said they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. 
Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We're now going to enact a ritual whereby I will hammer nails into the cross. Nails to symbolise my own sin and brokenness. Nails to symbolise also the suffering of the world from any form of injustice. Of course we believe that the death and resurrection of Christ takes away the power that this brokenness and this sin has within and over our lives. And I ask that once these nails are hammered in, you pray for peace and reconciliation in your own heart, in all your relationships and in the world. And whilst we do this, music composed by the Estonian composer Arvo Park will be playing.
hands and feet of Christ. Jesus' hands and feet were not just anyone's hands and feet, but the signs of his real bodily presence. They were the hands and feet of Jesus marked with the wounds of his crucifixion. It is of great spiritual importance that Jesus made himself known to his disciples by showing them his wounded body. The resurrection had not taken his wounds away, but rather they had become part of his glory. They had become glorified wounds. Jesus is the Lord who came to save us by dying for us on the cross. 
The wounds in Jesus' glorified body remind us of the way in which we are saved. They also remind us that our own wounds are much more than roadblocks on our way to God. They show us our own unique way to follow the suffering of Christ. And they are destined to become glorified in our resurrected life. Just as Jesus was identified by his wounds, so are we. This mystery is hard to grasp, but it is of the greatest importance in helping us to deal with our own brokenness. When I feel lonely, forgotten, rejected or despised, I can easily be tempted to respond to these painful experiences with anger, resentment and a desire for revenge. Much violence in our world is a desperate acting out of that wounded inner self. If I'm willing to claim my woundedness as my unique way to the resurrection, then I may start caring for my wounds, knowing that they will identify me in my eternal life in God. What does this caring for my wounds mean? It means acknowledging them as revelations of my unique way of being human, listening to them as teachers who help me find my own way to holiness, sharing them as a source of consolation and comfort, and allowing others to pour oil on them and bind them in times of great pain. Thus I proclaim that my wounds are not causes for embarrassment, but the same source of a joyful acknowledgement of my unique vocation to journey with Jesus through suffering to the glory of God. Lord, for our sake, you left the riches of heaven and became poor. You came within our reach. The nakedness of God was exposed before the world. Lord, O oh lovely Christ, may we be open to you and to each other. May we be open to you and to each other. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. After three hours on the cross, our Lord committed himself to God and died. He did not do that before he had asked forgiveness on all those who had done him wrong. Now in the face of the cross, 
I declare to all who are truly penitent, these gracious words of God, your sins are forgiven. So go in peace in the knowledge and hope of eternal life, which are ours through the promise of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.